evening, everybody. How are you? Hey, Phil, you're one crazy character, I gotta tell you. <laughs> you are crazy. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Phil, uh, it's, I don't know, what time is it where you are, Phil? And I, you just went to bed a little while ago, I think. <laughs> and Mr. Mike Peterson, how are you? Glad to see you here. Haven't seen you in a while. Glad to have you in here. Terrific. Hope everyone's doing okay. Uh, can I get a quick sound check? Is sound all right? Oops, I need to click on this. I have to do this every single time. There we go. There we go. Mike's good. Thank you very much. All right, 2 a.m. Oh, Phil. Seriously, thanks for being here, Phil. <laughs> Phil's in the trading room and uh, during the day, and he did. I think he had to actually set his alarm clock to wake up to be here. So cool. Great. <laughs> Way to go. Um, all right. Oh, yes. Recorder's running. Thanks. Thanks, Neil. Uh, reminder here. The quarter is recorder is running. Good morning. Oh, good morning from Switzerland. Thank you so much for being here from Switzerland. Appreciate that. Really do. Thanks. That's pretty cool. That really is. Uh, uh, um, so tonight, the main subject for tonight, and well, the main subject tonight is when are losses good. We're going to look at some charts and whatnot, and we're going to talk about when losses are good. And I'm going to use a really bad word here to a lot of people, and please don't leave, okay? I'm just going to get this, I'm going to rip the band-aid off, and I'm going to get this word out there, and, and please don't leave, stay here, stop, stops. Oh, God, did that hurt? Did that bandy, when that bandy come off, did that hurt? I promise you we're not going to harp and harp and harp and harp about stops. But what we are going to do is talk about sometimes a loss is the best thing that ever happened in your day. That we are going to talk about. Um, so um, that'll be the main topic. We're certainly going to look at some charts. We're going to look at the market here uh, in a sec. So uh, please don't anyone be afraid to... Uh, ask questions. I, I love questions. In fact, you have no idea how, well, maybe you actually, actually, maybe you do. You know how lonely it is if you're, you're uh, say, up on stage or you're trying to, you know, present somewhere and the audience doesn't participate. It can be, uh, it, it can be horrible. So uh, we love questions. So thank you very much for that. I do want to make, well, two reminders here. Two, uh, the first reminder is if you are a member of Hit Run Candlesticks or you are a member of Right Way Options, this also includes trial members. Please take advantage of the Pro Trading Room app. It's part of your trial or your membership. So what this means is that if I post a stock in the app, which I post my buys and sells and adjustment just as Doug does, with right way options, then you will receive an alert and you do not have to be in the room. Uh, it'll come on your smartphone, okay? So make sure you take advantage of this. Now, there's nothing we can do to help you with that tonight, okay? So just go to the website at the top right, you'll see, con well, at the top, sort of in the middle, one of those green boxes, you'll see contact us. Uh, make sure you send it to Ed. <laughs> Sorry, Ed. Um, and we'll help you get squared away, okay? Uh, the second thing is I want to remind everybody that uh, on the Thursday the 18th of this month and Saturday the 20th, uh, I'll be doing a workshop on uh, the rounded bottom breakout. So I just want to keep, keep everyone up to date on that, okay? Uh, Gwen, you will get an email all lifetime. Thank you, Gwen, by the way. Um, you'll get an email. In fact, I'll tell you what. Um, let me make a note here. Let me make a note. Um, lifetime, send email. I will do that tomorrow so you have all the login information. And we'll make sure that we also send it uh, ahead of time, plenty of time, okay? And thank you, Gwen. Thank you. Well, we'll just, just send you login information, okay? Thank you for that. Appreciate it. I did forget about it here today. Um KG, you don't want to stop. Yeah, I'll hear you. 
So um, there are probably some hit and run candlestick members logged in tonight just to see if I go off the handle today or go off the reservation. I guess I kind of went off the reservation <laughs> uh, today in the trading room. Not in a bad way. Just sometimes I come up with the craziest explanations and uh, I might have, I might have, I might have pushed the envelope this afternoon. I'll try not to do that tonight. Okay. I'll try. I'll try. All right. Let's let enough of that. That was about five minutes of a lot of nothing. So let's get with the program here. So let's talk about the market. Um, I have to still be bullish on this market. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying that because it's obeying all my, my, uh, trend. Let's see. Let's use this color here. This, um, oh yeah, I'll come back to this in a second. The, these two moving averages, uh, we're above the T line here. And because of that, I have to remain bullish. The T line is, is like a, a guiding light for me. The T line has been a, uh, Oh, it, it, it's just been, it's, it, it's been the greatest thing for me, uh, when I kind of just sort of, we just named it the T-line. It wasn't, it's the eight exponential moving average. There's nothing secret about that. Uh, but what I found uh, in trading is that when charts are trending up and they come back and they, they just kind of, you know, when they, when they, when they're trending up and they just do their thing like this, you'll find that the lows tend to hang around that T-line area. And if they fall below what happens, and I'm just going to, that will be, say, the T-line right there down the road. What will happen is when we're short or when the market is short moving down, it tends to do this. It tends to find those highs or the highs tend to find that T-line area. And when that changes many, 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 many times, that is a reversal. Um, so for instance, we're and I, here, let's, uh, let me back some of this up. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. So as long as we stay above that T line right there, I have to remain bullish until we break that till we break that. Then I get, it's not that I get all kinds of crazy bearish, but I do get extremely concerned, uh, at this level here. So that and I'm just pointing that out because we're still there. Now, with that said, I have to tell you that uh, these three candles right here—they do make me nervous. They make me very nervous, and I am—I'm uh, a nervous Ned uh, when the market gets too high, and you know, it's too high in my mind, too high in my mind, and. Um, doesn't mean that it can't go higher. It's just in my mind, it's too high and it hasn't had a good pullback yet. And if you just look back at the market here, you can see what I'm talking about using this red line, salmon color, I guess. And that's nothing more than uh, the 17 EMA right there. Uh, but if you take a look at it and you look how long that is, look, look at these here. It's longer right here than it's been in quite a while. So it, it, it's, it's, it's like, this one's pretty long here. It's like throwing a rock up in the sky. It will come down. It will come down. Okay. Um, and, uh, so anyway, that's why I, I've been calling this, uh, the wall of worry, wall of worry for me. Uh, so, um, anyway, I, I'm just showing some concern there. Here, let me grab some of these uh, T line change color. Yeah, Dave, what I did is somebody was asking if they could do the trendicator with the T line. And I said, sure. And I just did it. And I believe this was, what is today? Was this yesterday? I did this. Um, I just, I did it and I, I just left it there. It just kind of changed things up, something different. Uh, but yeah, the T line is the dots, uh, whether the dots are green or whether they're red, that's the T line. And then this line here, it's still the 17. That's the same thing there. So, yeah, all I did was switch them. Let's see here. Uh, the three bars could be consolidating. You're right, Ken. They absolutely could be. 
They, they could be. I don't think we have enough information yet, but yes, it could be just consolidation. And, you know, if we just use that as the trend right there, it could be consolidation right up to that. We'll have to see. Let's see here. Uh, Mike, yeah, the T-line is equal to the 8 EMA. Yes, that's exactly what it is. It's just the 8 exponential moving average. Yes, sir. Uh, let's see my spar chart, TC2000, showing a massive wick down to the 44. You know, you may have it set to real time. Uh, that would be my guess. 21. This is not set to real time. Uh, and the way you do it is right-click, go to edit, and change this right here. I, I only pre-market do I set mine to up here, and I do that pre-market. Other than that, I always keep it down here to never. You know, you decide what you like there. Um, let's see, good idea, Malcolm. Hey, Malcolm, how are you? Um, let's see, I, let's see, look at Apple. Uh, free, yeah, 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 go look at some of those big players like that, and you'll see where it does that. It does it for the little small fries as well. Anyway, it's just a great line, but... That's not what tonight is mostly about. So, um, so anyway, the SPY is bullish, but be cautious. Uh, FNGU, this is one that I follow an awful lot. And you can see here we have an evening star and we have a bearish engulf. I mean, look, you got to know that something is going on here. And sure enough, look what's happened. Here we've broken below the T-line. See how it's gone from red, green to red here. Um, so I have some real concern here, real concern. Um, now what we have to be careful of is if we have follow through, and I think we can look at this and say, hey, we have a little support right in here maybe. Man, I have to put it right here though. Um, so let's see what happens. Uh, based on my charts, what I look at, uh, and I do follow moving averages quite a bit, um, so if we get through this area right here, here's the 50 period moving average. That's that's my going to be my next target on FNGU. And if that happens, that's likely to pull uh, this buy down. Well, that's likely to pull the entire market down a little bit. I want to take a look at one more and then we're going to look at some charts and we're going to talk about saving you some money. Uh, VIX. Let's take a look at that. And uh, I think this is important. I think this is massively important. I mean, monstrous important. So I look at this chart here and I see a bullish W pattern. So we're going to start here. We're going to go down just to these lows. Doesn't matter which one, but we are going to come up to that high right there. And then we're going to come down any one of those lows. Doesn't matter. And then we're going to bring it up. There's our bullish W pattern right there. And we have, we didn't break out. I don't count this candle as a breakout. To me, that's not a breakout. But we have this bullish W pattern setting up. Now, I think if we, if, if we start to break out and if we get through this area right here about 1920-ish, and that is basically the 200 period moving average up there. That you, a little, kind of a dim down line right there. And this line right here is the 50 period moving average. This could put some pressure on the market. The kind of pressure that if you are too long, you're not going to be a happy camper. So uh, keep an eye on the VIX here. Uh, keep a close eye on it. The VIX is one of those charts that I watch constantly, all day long, on another monitor. Um, now, that's not saying we can't come up into this area and cave in, just like we did here. But if we get up through there, that's going to put some pressure uh, that'll drive us down. And it might be more than what you really might want in your account that has 15 longs. Okay, just saying. Alrighty. Um, 
what else can we do here? Answer a question, maybe. Uh, <laughs> Amelia, look, look let, let's not get too wrapped up over the moving averages, okay? Um, I could change these. I could shift these all by five digits, and it wouldn't make a difference. Uh, this is the 17 exponential moving average right here. Change it to whatever color you want, um, anything. This right here is the T line. I just changed it yesterday just for fun. Uh, so let, yeah, let's not get too too wrapped up, okay? I, I, I'm serious, you guys. I could change every one of these moving averages by five digits and it wouldn't make a doggone difference. Would not make a single difference. Other than all my trading would shift to those moving averages. That's all. It would just shift that way. That is absolutely it. All right, let's talk about this, okay? When are losses good? And I want to start off by saying that um, I feel that my weak spot, my weak spot, my Waterloo, my Achilles heel, is not sticking with my predetermined stops. No matter what. No matter what. Now, I bought a chart here right at the end of the day. I bought Nikola. So we're going we're gonna to use this one for right now. And when I say predetermined stops, so when I bought it, I already knew that my stop was going to be right here, about 1345, basically the low of today's candle. So I... I, I truly, truly feel that this is my, my, my weak spot right here. And uh, I plan to make a serious effort into no matter what, if we get below that, which I, I'm a, for the most part, I'm an end of the day trader, meaning that, um, Say something like this happens right here. Say we do this and we hang there all day long. I'm likely to stay there all day long. But at the end of the day, I'm going to close that out. And, and this is where I, I think I've made too many mistakes personally. And I truly feel that a lot of other people do this too, is they find every excuse in the world to hang on to it. Well, yeah, man, it closed down there. Oh, you know, that's a better place anyway. Look at that. You've got those two wicks down there. You know what? I'm going to move my stop down there. Okay, no problem. No problem. That's okay. No problem at all. We've, we, we've, now, we've now changed the game plan. And that's okay. It's my trade. It's my money. I can do whatever I want to do. The problem is, what are you going to do when it does this? Well, oh, that's okay. That's all right. That's okay. Because, oh, look at this. Oh, I'm going to take it here. Look at that. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, boy. That's great. That's where it's going to go. So you know what? I think we're just going to hold there, and that's all right. That's perfectly fine. And then, and then, like clockwork, what it's going to do, it's going to give you that candle that thinks you're the smartest trader in the world, and then it's going to do this. And now what are you going to do? So here's the thing. If this stop, if I would have obeyed this stop, and it doesn't matter whether you have a hard stop or you have an imaginary stop, you don't... I, I'm not, I'm not pushing hard stops. I, I'm not. I'm just saying, when you bought this chart, you had a reason why you bought it. You also have to have a reason. I think you have to have anyway, a reason that um, you would not like it. Now I bought it because of this breakout, this pullback, settling in. Well, I'm not going to like it if it starts to fail that area right there. And by the way, there's nothing magic about that area. Somebody could come in here and say, you know what? That's my area. Okay, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. 
the thing of it is, if I close it out here, um, you know, if I if I obey that stop, I'm 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 minus what uh, I, I, I I I really don't know. So I'm going to kind of make some numbers up here, but I'm minus ten percent. Now I bought an option. I'm minus ten percent. If I wait for down here. I could end up minus 40%. And you want to ruin your trading? This will ruin it. I've seen this happen to so many people. They make money one week after another week. They, they are just smacking that ball out of the park. They are rocking week after week. Oh, they have losses. Don't, don't get me wrong. Not every, you know, there's losses in there. But overall, Monday through Friday, at the end of Friday... They've made money. And then all of a sudden, one trade they become a knucklehead on, one trade wipes out three quarters of that right there. One trade. Now, I know that's happened to everybody here. I know that. You, you, the only way it hasn't happened to you if you started trading, oh, I don't know, three days ago. I know this has happened. So here's the thing. When is a $100 loss good? When you finally have to take a $500 loss. When is a, um, oh, let's, let's think in terms of percent, okay? Let's leave the money out of it because percent makes us all equal. So uh, you're, you're in the stock. Say you buy the stock here. And um, when is a 5% loss good. Well, when you finally get down here and you take the 20% loss, all of a sudden that 5% is tasting kind of sweet, isn't it? Oh, heck yeah. Options. What if right here was a 10% loss, but down here was a 40% loss? I got to tell you, I probably should have done that in a different color. That right there is tasting pretty sweet compared to this. Pretty doggone sweet. So here's something I want to ask. Um, let's see here. Um, what, um, uh, how can I ask this? Um, uh, d does anyone have an idea what a good win-loss ratio is? Does anyone have a good idea what a win-loss ratio is? And go ahead, please feel free to type away. Please, please do. 75, 25, 65%, right? 70, 30, 3 to 1. Thank you, everyone. Mara, hi, Mara. Uh, 2 or 3 to 1. Rickster, 50, 50. Interesting number there. We just might come back and talk about that one. Thank you. Uh, 60 plus. You know that you guys are all right. Every one of you. The high numbers, the low numbers, you are all right. But here's something I want to establish right now, okay? So is it safe to say that we have losses? Is that safe? Go ahead. Yes, no. We, 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 I kind of tricked you into this, didn't I? You can't hardly say no. I kind of tricked you into that. Sorry. So, so can we freely admit that we have losses, or we already have, right? Okay. Now, now, and I mean, let's get it out of our system. Let's accept the fact that we can't have 100% winners. It, it, nobody does, okay? It, nothing against you, Dave. Nothing at all, okay? Uh, nobody has 100% winners. Anyone who tells you to do... You need to pick your bags up and run like hell the other direction. Get away from them because <laughs> they're lying to you. <laughs> they are lying. So um, Rickster there had an interesting number compared to most everyone else's. Uh, very interesting number. He said 50%, 50-50. 50 wins, 50 losses. Interesting number. That is. Because I think he's 100% right. Now, I think all you guys are 100% right. Everybody who put an answer out there, you're correct. 
There's nothing wrong with what you put out there. But do you know you can make a bucket load of money at just winning 50% of your trades? I reached out to um, some friends and acquaintances last week because I knew I was doing this webinar today. Uh, I reached out to them and um, some of them, not all of them, have gotten back to me. And these are traders that uh, they are not off this number at all. Okay, they're not off that. Some, some were uh, 65, uh, 45, something like that. Um, uh, some were, you, you're, you're, you're going to think this is crazy. Um, here, I should have done this. I should have done this like this. Uh, I'm going to kind of write over this in green. 50% winners. Do you know that a couple of them, they admitted to me, and I mean, these are good people, okay, that they were less than that. They were less than that. Uh, they were, one person even said he only has about 40% winners, 60% losers. That was supposed to have been red, 60% losers, okay. I want to share with you, I reached out with a handful of traders that I knew were, uh, were, were successful. They've been in the business a long, long time. Um, I can say that a couple of them anyway are pretty good friends. Um, a couple of them I met at the shows that we've done in the past and I've done webinars for them. They've done webinars for me and so on and so on. Um, I can tell you that they range uh, from making $65,000 a year and one makes $175,000 a year. And the others, they, they were kind of in the middle here, okay? So you don't have to make 70% winners. Don't get me wrong. That's always a much better number to strive for than 50-50. Much better number. But you don't have to. If... If you are looking at a chart and you buy a chart and it does not work for you, get out of it. I mean, if this chart does not work for me, I'm out. I'm done. That's going to be my goal here. Now, it can stay here if it wants. And here, I'm just going to go to a neutral color. It can stay here and do this as long as it wants, which I know it won't be for too long. But as long as it stays there, okay. All righty. And I will wait till it does what I want it to do. If it does not do what I want it to do, I'm going to have to get out of it. I'm going to have to get out. And save myself all that money to the downside. Now I know that this is my th this this is my this is my weakness. I know that. I hate to take losses. And but I have gone back and I have done um, some research on my own trading, and I've discovered that you know I actually trade pretty good. I'm kind of like, well, God dang it. How come I'm not making more money then? That's because the losers that I hung on to, they sucked the profit clean out. I mean, they just, it's like this great big sucking vacuum. So whether or not you put a stop on, honestly, I don't care whether you use a stop. I, I, whether you put a hard stop, I don't care. That's It's your trade, your business. But if you trade a trade and you tell yourself, you know what, I like this trade on a breakout here and I'm going to not like it right here. And if you were to buy this stock up here when it broke out, like your plan was, great. And if this stock started to act good, okay, fantastic. 
If it started to act bad, all right, not so good. You're going to be an unhappy camper. But once it breaks through that point that you predetermined, not, not buy it and three days later put it there. I mean like know it before you buy it. Then when it gets there, take the loss. It's okay. When is a $100 loss good? When you finally take the $500 loss. That's when it is good. All righty. If you <laughs> if you don't like, I like that. If you don't like your, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna remember that. I have got some notes over here. I'm gonna have to use that one, Rick. Street. Yeah. If you don't like your first loss, well, you sure as hell not gonna like that second one. No doubt about it. So, I I, I told everyone in the trading room today that I I feel. I would feel extremely comfortable just, I, I wish I had the money to dole out. Okay, I don't. Um, but if I had the money to dole out and everybody that's in the Hit Run Candles trade trading room just say, trade for me, that's all. You Because you guys are all good traders. You really are. I, I Exceptional traders. I mean, if you don't believe me, go look at the little, the blog I do every day, kind of all day long. And you'll see the kind of money that comes out. Uh, it, good traders. And I think everybody there is great stock pickers. And here, here's something for everyone in this room. You are all terrific stock traders. You really are. You are terrific stock pickers. You all know what to look for. Look, there's, you know, we go over it day after day after day after day. And you guys could do the same thing. It's not hard. It really is not. You know what you're looking for. Look for it. Trade it. That simple. Where I, I truly believe where we slip is we don't pay attention to our losses. We let our losses get out of control. And you can have those winners, uh, winners, winners, winners like this. You, you can have those winners... And it just takes that one, that one trade that just comes in it and smacks you right in the head. For whatever reason, you stay with it. Doesn't matter why. Mr. Buffett bought it. Who cares? Look, I admire the man like crazy. Who cares if he bought it? You heard somebody say this chart's gonna go to yada 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 yada, and here it goes down. But by golly, you stay with it. Man, I'll tell you, if this is your stop right there, get out of it. Well, if it goes to your stop. Because that one trade will suck the happiness clean out of your trading. And that's what I determined was happening. I was, I was not obeying these things like this. So just do it. <laughs> it just, that's what I tell myself. Just do it. Why, why are you fighting this? So here's one thing is we hate to take losses. And guys, I got to tell you, uh, I'm a guy, so I feel that I can say this. We suck. All right? We do. Ladies, I have found, I've done a lot of coaching over the years, and uh, both male and female, and I got to tell you, Ladies, you are by far better at this than us guys are. And that's admitting that, oh crap, I made a mistake. And doing something about it. Guys, we suck. We do not want to admit that we were wrong. We do not, and not at all do we want to admit it. And we will hold on to something for the dumbest reasons. It, we, yeah. Gwen, you could be right. You don't let your egos get in your way. Guys, no, you know what I think we do. And we will hold on to things for the dumbest reasons. And this turns out instead of a 5% loss, uh, well, here I can tell you if you're if you're uh, if you're in the stock, and I bought it right, right at the close today. So the stock is a six, let's just call it a 6% loss. Um, 
this is going to be a loss on an option to the tune of uh, 15, 20% right in here, maybe. And if I let that go further, right there, could, 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 could we say that, you know, that seems pretty good. You know, I see support right in here. We're talking 40, 50% loss. That's insane. Why would we do that? Our egos? I don't know. But let's not do it anymore. Let's, let's, let's make it a point to, for members in the HRC room, post your stop in there. And, and you know, I, I, I ask everybody in the room, please post your losses, post your wins, post when you buy it, not three days later after you make 80%. And you know what? Everyone does that. Really, really cool. Well, why not post your stop in there? Be accountable to somebody. I'm being accountable to you right now. I bought this and that's my stop right there. I'm being very accountable to you. Uh, MJ. I'm long MJ. That's my stop right there. Now, tomorrow, actually, I might actually be raising this up today. Yeah. Uh, so that was my stop earlier today. I think I'm, I could raise this up a little bit higher today. There we go. So going into tomorrow, I'm thinking my stop is 1440 now. I'm being accountable here. And that will help me be better at this. Okay. Um, all right. Look, questions. I'm sorry. Sometimes I get to talking and I... And I uh, lose track of the questions here. Uh, oh, here, here's one other thing. And then let me run through these questions real quick. Here's a cool little tidbit. A really cool little tidbit. And that is, if you find you buy... Um, well, here, let's do it. Let, let me do it like this. Okay, everybody now knows I'm in MJ. Um Everybody knows that I'm uh, also in GM. If you don't know, you know now. Uh, I bought GM yesterday. I added to it today. So I'm in GM. Right now, my stop is 56, 55-ish right in here. Okay. So um, I'm also in Nikola. I'm in SKLZ. I'm in Chewy. I'm in BTBT. And I'm in Bank of America Short. Okay, so... If all of a sudden I have to close this out, okay, no big deal. Life goes on. But now, tomorrow morning rolls around. All right, this is not going to work. I close this out. And then a little while later, I have to close out Chewy. Okay, all right, this is not going to work too well, so I close this out. And then, let's say, SKLZ. I have to close out SKLZ. Okay, ding, 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 ding. There needs to be a light bulb go off in our heads. Because you are good stock pickers. I truly believe, I see the charts that are posted out there. I see the charts that are, questions are asked of, okay? Now, I think sometimes that I question whether, whether this, well, uh, I need to, let me hold that thought for a second. If you get stopped out of two or three charts, maybe what you need to do is stop, take a breath, and go revisit the market. What is the market doing? Because if you, and you don't want to turn around and buy one just because you sell one at a loss. Because if you see the market doing this, take the hint. Take the hint. This is a beauty of candlesticks. This is the beauty of breaking a trend and being able to see it. Use those tools. Take the hint. Maybe you need to dump all your longs. Take the hint. So if one goes south on you, okay, as long as, you know, no more than one, maybe two, for some traders, maybe three. Just, you know, don't, don't get carried away in trading. T take a breath for a minute. 
have a cup of coffee, do whatever you do, and just look at the market. Should I even be trading right now? Do I want to put anything at risk out there? Do I see charts that are set up for a buy based on your rules? Because your rules and my rules might be different. And I'm discovering that they are way different for some, some people and myself. Okay? Um, I, I love this question, I think, uh, Jeff. Uh, I, and I'm going to skip over a lot. I'll come back. But I love this question that Jeff just wrote. What is your opinion uh, of having a much lower stop if the option is a longer time leap? Well, Jeff, you, you kind of, you thank you. I couldn't have asked for better. Th this is where each trader, oops, there we go. Each trader and each trade, you have to decide, are you a short-term swing trader? <laughs> this is where I'm going to get sideways, team. <laughs> or... <laughs> or are you a long-term trader? Are you, <laughs> you know, I can't resist it, guys. Are you going to marry this stock? I don't care if it's a leap. I, if it's a leap, you're marrying it, I guess. You're buying curtains. You're buying a toaster. You've got a marriage license. You're taking a pregnancy test. I, I couldn't resist it. I had to. So, Jeff, you got to ask yourself, what are you doing with this chart? Whatever it may be. What are you? Are you a short-term swing trader? And by the way, short-term doesn't mean day trading, folks. Short-term doesn't mean two days. It doesn't mean 10 days. It means whatever you want it to mean. There is no real definition to short-term swing trading. There is no real definition. There's a lot of stuff out there if you Google it. But it's just some suggestions. There is no, you're not going to get arrested for making your own determination what a short-term swing trade is. And you might be in 10 different positions and you might have 10 different answers. One answer for each one of them. So I've got to ask, and, and I'm not necessarily looking for an answer here, but you know, what are you looking for? So to your question, if you want to put a deeper stop down here, just looking at this chart, it makes sense, I think, not. I'm going to say not. And here's why. Not, not from the get-go. Now, you may move your stop up, and let's just use the SPY here. You may use, you, you may move your stop up as the chart moves up, and you may move it up slower. But from the get-go, no. I, I my, my opinion is if it does not go your direction and it goes the wrong direction, get out of it. Because if you bought this stock right here uh, as a, a, a leap, for instance, and uh, you bought it right here, I, I, don't, I don't think you would, but... This is the chart we have in front of us. So if you bought this thing right here and it did this the next day, why would you want to stay in it? Now I, I know it went up, but you don't you don't get the you don't get this advantage of knowing that it's gone up. You don't get that advantage. Um and th this is a poor this really is a poor example because I'm not sure. I mean, it certainly didn't break down anything bad here. This is a poor example. So I hope I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say here. Um, but as it moves up, you might be definitely slower about moving your stop up. So you've got that deeper stop. You've got a chart that's trending, that's working. But right from the get-go, if that thing doesn't work, I don't want it. I, absolutely not. Anyway, thanks. Great question. And that's my opinion on it. I'm going to try to catch up on some questions here. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, let's see. And we've only lost a couple people. Thanks. I, I, I kind of figured you ripped that Band-Aid off and, and just get out there. Some people are going to um, walk away because they don't want to hear it. And they don't want to hear it because all they want is winners. And there's no such thing as nothing but winners. And 
There's no such thing as a trader never having losses. I do believe that if you control your losses, you will be a winner in trading. Because actually looking for charts going in your direction, bullish or bearish, is really, really easy. And I've seen everybody post charts. I know everybody gets it. It's the, it's, it's the losses that kill us. All right. Uh, sorry, I got sidetracked again here. Uh, where are we here? Do, 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 do. Uh, let me unflag this so if you guys type something, it doesn't. All righty. Tough day. Tough day with getting uh, stopped out today. You know, Jay, that's interesting. That's interesting. And thank you very much for sharing because I can, I can give you no less than a, a dozen or a couple dozen people from the trading room that it was one of the best days they've had. So it, it, while it may be tough for somebody, it's not so tough for somebody else. Everybody gets their turn and you have to get in time with the chart. So thank you very much for posting that and keeping it real. I appreciate it. Uh, you just have to get in time sometimes. Let's see, Rickster, uh, thank Doug and Rick for, oh, thanks, Rickster, appreciate it. Uh, eight times your weekly goal. Holy smoke. Nice. Have a cold one on me. Uh, Gwen, we don't let our ego, oh, yeah, <laughs> saw that early, thanks. Women are so good at sticking to a plane. You're right, Rickster, they are. And and over the years, uh, truly, I have I have coached both both male and female, and, and I can tell you that, I mean, different ones have their different little maybe problems, but I, but I think when it comes down to it, men have a really, really hard problem admitting that they're wrong, and maybe not admitting that they're wrong, but doing something about it. That's, that's what gets us. Yeah, I'm wrong. Yeah, let me get this set up. Yeah, yeah, I'm wrong. I thought it was going to go higher. But you know what? I am man. I'm going to stay in it. <laughs> yeah, I was wrong. But you know what? I think what I'm going to do is go get a marriage license on this. And uh, here's the 50 period moving average. I'm going to go buy a marriage license. I'm going to get all married up here, buy a house, you know, have some kids, that sort of thing. You know, become one with this thing. I know I was wrong, but I'm going to stay in it. Guys do that. Well, guys, let's stop doing it. Let, let's don't do this anymore. Sorry, gals. You, I, I don't know what to say about you. You're doing a good, great job. <laughs> let's see Dave Kathy Woods. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, she, yeah. Uh, uh, let's see, Gwen, I, I'm the worst... Uh, far as uh, to sticking to a plan and let my losses get too large. Fortunately, my winners are very good. Um, yeah, yeah. And for those that have been here a while, Gwen is not in the room all day long. In fact, sometimes the only time I see her is right here. Uh, sometimes I never see her in the room. Um, and uh, I've seen over, over the last couple of years, I've seen some of Gwen's trades um, and I got to tell you, I want to, I, I, I can't speak so much to her losses. I can speak to her winners and some of them have been insane. Um, oh, they're, they're things that I can only dream of. I, I, I could only lay my head down, uh, and go to sleep and dream of some of those winners. So way to go, Gwen. Nice. Let's see, Rickster, why did you buy it? Uh, Trap, that's what I think is missing when people report their trades. Why? Oh, I see what you're saying. Why? 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 Yeah, I, I bought, I bought uh, here. Um, uh, BTBT, we'll look at a different one. I'm long BTBT. Why did I buy it? I bought, and I see what you're saying here. I bought it because of this pop-up and I bought it because it's just kind of walking uh, to the right here. Yeah, I definitely see what you're saying. Yeah, it's one thing to say, you know, I bought XYZ. Well, why'd you buy it? Yeah, good point. Thank you. 
Let's see, Mike is asking, uh, why wait to the end of the day? Uh, you don't have to, Mike, and, and, and that's not a recommendation. Uh, it's just something I like to do. Now, I will say this. Here's where I don't do that, and thanks for mentioning that. Um, let's just take BTBT BT here, and let's just assume that tomorrow it's, I don't know, here, let's just... We'll make it a blue color, kind of neutral. Let's just say it's right there, okay? It's not green, it's not red, it's just right there. It doesn't matter what it is. Okay, now, I can't switch to the spy chart when I do this. So let's just pretend the spy chart is up here. And uh, what, this was uh, three days ago, this was two days ago, this was today, something like that, right? Um, and I think getting there... Uh, so there's the spy, right? So if, if the spy, say tomorrow, was to start getting with it to the downside, now let's come back over here. If this chart, um, I probably shouldn't have drawn this one first. So let's say this comes down, but we're still holding... Uh, the 17 here. And by the way, that's kind of my stop in there as long as it tracks above that 17 EMA. Let's say it starts coming down, which no one is going to like that candle, but you know, it's still in play. It's still in there. But the market is doing this. I will get out of this in a heartbeat. I won't wait to the end of the day. If the market's tanking, 85% of all stocks are going to tank. And what makes me think I'm in one of those 15%. So I'm going to run for safety, which is usually cash for me. So where I won't wait to the end of the day is if everything's going to go into pot. Okay. So not a recommendation that you wait to the end, end of the day. Not at all. It's just the way I trade. And this is where you've got to make your rules and follow your charts. Um, Where's your stop? And if you want to be stopped out intraday, that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Dave says he got stopped out of Chewy today. Uh, I bought it back today. Chewy. There we go. Uh, I bought it back today. Um, and I'm actually looking forward to, I would love for it. I, I even have an ad thing here um, to remind me. I'm even wanting it to actually pull back a little bit more. And I want the market to stay strong. And I might add. And right now my stop is right there. Right, what, 72.70, I guess. Um, Emilda, Rick, uh, would it be a good idea to use the 8 EMA or 90 EMA as a stop loss if we want to limit size of loss? Uh, great question. Uh, first of all, pick one. It doesn't matter which one you use. I wouldn't use two of them, though. I wouldn't do that. Not at all. I, I think that's a bad idea, personally. Um, pick one. It won't matter which one. Um, let's do this. I'm going to come over here to this chart right here. And let's pick a new stock here. Let's pick um, FCX. Yeah. Let's pick FCX. Um, I'm going to, well, I'll just remember to put that back. Okay, put that back. So here's the T-line, right? If, if, um, hmm, okay, let's do this. If you're following FCX and tomorrow it opens up, right? And it moves up and up and up and up and up and up. And you've missed it as far as this goes. I don't mean that you missed the trade. And all of a sudden, you decide to get into it up here. Nothing wrong with that. I'm going to remove this here for a second. And I'm going to put a line right up here. You've got a breakout. There's nothing at all wrong with buying it up here, if that's your plan. Here's the problem using the T-line right now, okay? Um, Let's just eyeball where it is, and I'm going to have to put another line up here. I can't use those fancy drawing tools 
and work with the chart. It, it just doesn't work that way. It doesn't allow you to do it. So say you buy this up here. Okay, great. Well, now what we're going to do is come down to the T-line, and that's your stop. Are you okay with a 7.3% stop? That's what you've got to ask yourself. Now, I am not necessarily good with a 7.3% stop, but more than the 7% stop, you know what I'm not good with? Just the simple chart, buying it up here and having it come back that far, that, that looks scary. It's got nothing to do with 7%, but that looks scary. So you can't use the T-line if you buy it up here. If you want to trade the T-line, then trade close to it. This is where, look, a lot of people have been to one of Doug's trap classes. We'll be covering it uh, on the rounded bottom breakout class as well um, because it's a great entry. But that is one of the best entries there are. Um, hang with that 3 8 trap class. Uh, you know, if you've taken the class, there you go. So now, let's see. The, the red, the green dot is the T-line here. So if you're going to use that, if you're going to use a moving average for a stop, you're going to have to buy it close to that moving average. You can't buy it far away from the moving average. And maybe I got sidetracked from what you were really asking. Um, so say you buy it right here. Now your stop is, what, 2.25%. You would take a tiny bit maybe. So you have to buy it close to that moving average. I just gave you a fantastic strategy, by the way. I hope that answered your question. If not, please ask again, okay? Uh, Dave, the T-line is your boss. Yeah, I love it too. Uh, yeah, I hear you. Uh, Emilia, sometimes I hold on to a loss for three days to see if the chart will rebound. And sometimes it works and sometimes, uh, it, uh, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't, uh, given... Uh, a monthly. Okay, so here's the thing, Emilda. You've got to ask yourself, are you making money? There, there's only there's only really one way to tell if your trading is any good. And that's if you're making money. It's got nothing to do where you enter it. It's got nothing to do with what charts you trade. It has nothing to do with how much money you have. You're either making money or you're not. Simple as that. And if you're not making money, then you need to make changes. Again, it's that simple. If you are making money, then maybe you want to tweak things. Don't change too much. Just tweak things to make it better. Now, here's where another problem lies. Now, I don't know you. I don't. I don't know. Maybe you're one of these guys that's going to have to pay $15 billion in taxes. I don't know. Maybe. Which means you have a bucket load of money. Those that have more money can hold stocks longer. A simple fact. So those that have to pay $15 billion in taxes, well, you probably have enough money to buy whatever the hell you want and hold on to it for as long as you want. But if you're somebody with limited resources, again, I'm going to let you decide what limited resources are, you can't afford to do that. In fact, I would argue that if somebody sets out to be a swing trader and they have a, uh, I'll say, modest to small account, they can't afford to get married. They can't afford to have children. They can't afford to go pick out toasters and drapes and dishes. You can't afford to do that. Malcolm, the only difference between a trader and investor is one sell order. Yeah. Let's see, Bill, I've done a study over the last two years and found that once a trade turn turns red, there's only a 35% chance that it goes back to green before it hits your stop. Interesting. You know what, everybody? You need to go see what Bill wrote there. You need to copy that and you need to paste it somewhere. And I think you need to do your own 
study. And it's not hard to do. That wouldn't be hard to do. Bill, thank you very much. That is an interesting, interesting discovery there. Thank you. I have to read this again. Let's make a taste of apparently 35% chance that it will go back green before it hits your stock. Interesting. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Dick, how do you handle the whipsaw where your stop is too close and the stop goes back after you get stopped out? Great question. Okay, if it's whipsawing you around, Dick, one thing you might want to look at is the type of trades you're in, the type of stocks you're in. Um, if you are going to trade stocks like BTBT, you know, one minute I'm up 28%. Uh, the next minute, I'm down 13%, and I've never hit my stop. This thing has whipsawed me around every which way from Sunday. So, but if, but if you look at this, just look at, well, look, look at my green box here. From this point here to this point here is 36%. This stock whipsaws. Stocks that are very volatile, whipsaws. So maybe consider the type of stocks you're buying. Maybe you don't want to buy stocks like this. Maybe what you want to buy stocks are uh, like D-O-W, boring. G-E, boring. You know, boring stocks. Coke, boring. Uh, Nike, boring. So if you find yourself getting stopped out, take a look at the stocks you're, you're, you're buying. Maybe these are stocks you really don't want to be in because they're too whipsawy. Another thing you might want to do is take a look at the market. Would you say the past three days have been whipsawy? Yeah. So if the market is whipsawy, how about you don't trade those days? Wait till the market straightens itself out. How do we know it straightens itself out? Now, based on the chart we have in front of us, okay? Now, six days from now, it might be completely different. But right now, what would do that? A breakout. There you go. Get out of this mess right here. Get out of the, get, a, get out of, don't get in front of the bus. You get run over. This will cause whipsaw in charts. We, we're seeing it all the time now when, when this happens. So think about the charts you're getting into and consider what the market is doing. Thank you, by the way. Great question. Appreciate that. Uh, I think you answered my own question. Your stop is too close. Okay. Yeah, that's another thing, too. You know, if you're getting into stocks and you're... Uh, let's pick another one. Space. Um, if, if you're buying space and you put your stop right here at look, you're just asking to get punched in the nose. So just just come on over. Let me punch you in the nose. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Uh, and let's look at this stock. So where would I put my stop? Uh, maybe right here. And I'm going to say maybe because I'm going to show you something in a minute. I don't know how this is going to work out. I really don't uh, until I do the work with it. There you go. Can I afford 4.7%? That's a question I have to ask myself. So maybe, maybe, maybe you like space. Maybe you want to get into space. Maybe for whatever reason. Oh yeah, whatever reason you want to get into space. Okay, get in space. But you have to ask yourself by buying it here, can you afford that for a stop? No, I can't. So you know what I'll do? I think I'll raise my stop up to right here. Well, you're just asking to get stopped out now. You're just, yeah, you're just, uh, you're just, you're just asking to get stopped out. You're begging for a stop out. So, yeah. So, some trade just can't be, can't be in them. And stops too tight, yeah. Uh, let's see, Jay, I, I got stopped out uh, with what I plan uh, to lose to the downside, thus controlling my losses. Excellent. I, I truly do believe, guys, I... I, I really did. I've had to go back and kind of reevaluate some of, some of my trades. And, and what I discovered was there's nothing wrong with my stock picking. There's another, nothing wrong with my profit taking. There's 
what's wrong is I've let some losses get the best of me. And you can make all the money you want Monday through Friday. But if you, if you have one of those losers that you're holding on to, this will suck the life out of all that. It, it, just, it just sucks it out. Yeah, you've got to control those losses. Um, thanks, Gwen. Thank you. I, oh, you bet. And I, I'm serious, Gwen. Uh, you're never in the room. Um, I, I mean, not, I shouldn't say never, but it, it's not your hangout. You don't hang there. And, and uh, the only time I really see you is on a Tuesday night. And uh, I've seen some of your trades. And, you know, you, you're in a stock and it's up here and you bought it here. And I'm thinking... Need a husband, you know? <laughs> He's great. <laughs> Let's see, Jay. I like that strategy. Uh, if I only be consistent uh, with it and not uh, pray and hope. Yeah, so, um, Emil, um, so I'm going to give you a little helping hand here. You have, uh, you post in the room, and I thank you for that. Um, th this is what I tell a lot of people that I coach. This is kind of one of my go-to statements, and I've said it many, 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 many times in the room, is stop trying to make money. I I'm serious. Take a month off of trading where you do trade though, but you trade, say you're going to buy space and maybe you buy 10 contracts, okay? Uh, don't buy 10 contracts, buy one. And the goal is not to make money the goal is to perfect your trading. The second, the second you go to making money, you screwed the pooch. It's not going to work. You're not learning a thing. Because now what happens is that, is that emotion takes over. I got to make money. I got to make money. I got to make money. Take that, take that out of the equation. Take it completely out of the equation. In fact, don't even trade a contract. Trade the stock. Buy two shares. Yeah, don't, don't do a contract. Buy, buy two shares of the stock. And then practice trading. Practice. By golly, I'm going to live with that stock, that stock because now you don't have anything vested. You don't have skin in the game. At, at two shares, you don't have skin in the game. So what the heck? Put that stop where you think maybe it should go. What have you got to lose? Nothing. But you get great practice. Try it for 30 days. Ah, uh, let's see. FCX is down after hours. I don't know if it'll show up here. Oh, it does. All right, so, whoops, let's get this out of the way. So here it is. That, that's where I have it. Maybe you can confirm that it's there. I'm going to take this off because it does change the chart sometimes. So here we are at 3870. While it's down, if honestly, if, if I owned this chart, which I don't, but if I owned this chart, bought it at the close, say, and tomorrow... It opened up right here. I'm going to be like, who is a wily e. coyote licking his chops with a knife and fork? I'm going to want to add to this. As long as it doesn't, uh, get in my stop. And probably should have made that red, maybe. Right there. I'm going to go with my stop being about right there. As long as it stays above my stop, I'm going to have to think about adding to it. Uh, GM, case in point, right there. I bought GM yesterday. It pulled back. I added to it today. Stayed above my stop. Started to put some legs on it. I wish it had more legs on it, but uh, it is what it is now. Long as it stays above my stop, I might add more to it. Okay, where are we? Mm, da, 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 da. Kyle, thanks for the info. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for being here, Kyle. Terry C., thanks. Thanks for being here, Terry. Milda, yes. 
I'm up for the year. Thank you uh, for sharing that. Great. Much higher, though, uh, before this October, but have since clawed back since using fewer contracts to limit risk. Nice. You know, you can make a lot of money, and the answer is not always throwing more money at it. Kind of cool. Thanks for posting that. Uh, try KR. Uh, KR is one that uh, I'm thinking about getting into. The only reason I didn't get in it today is because I wasn't really happy the way the market was running, and I made the decision that I'm not going to buy it till over 42.25. And I think I looked at the three bar chart. Yep, the three bar chart did it for me, um, right there. And I made the decision that you know what I'll I'll look at KR. I like the KR chart. I want to be in the KR chart, but I'm not going to buy it down here because to me that's not a buy signal, but up here would be a buy signal. So that's my plan with KR. I like KR a lot. Uh, I think I will wait uh, till Max Euphoria hits the market. Uh, let's see. David, look at MUR. Nice chart. Super chart. Earnings not till January. That's a nice chart. I'm going to flag that. Thank you. A uh, beautiful chart. Look at this thing. Um, we're going to have to, I'm going to have to dim this down right here. Too bright for my eyeballs. Uh, about right there. There we go. Look at that. Boom, 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 boom. Beautiful breakout. Look at that bottom right there. Superb. Here's the weekly chart. I'm going to look at the weekly chart just so I get a bigger picture. So now what I'm going to do, since there's stuff over here on the left, I'm going to think to myself, I'd be happy with 3490. So that's super right there. I think that's a nice chart. So th this is how I would plan a chart right there. Uh, what would I want for an entry? Somewhere in there. Well, let me, I'm going to add to this. Somewhere in there. That, that's where I would like an entry, and depending on where you buy it, a possible 19%, probably shy of that. But that's right there how I would set up a chart. That's a nice one. Thanks, David. Now, let me read what else you wrote. Sorry, I, I have a habit of not reading through. Uh, broke the downtrend. Yep, uh, whole uptrend. Broke resistance. Buyers showing up. Low risk setup. Yeah, I think so. We'll go, we're going to go look at a few other things here. Uh, top sector, tomorrow if the market is up, I think I will place it. Check this out, guys. Um, not only is Dave saying he's thinking about buying Murr here, he's telling us his plan. How cool is that? I will place a buy stop limit order above 306. Above 30, let me make sure I'm reading that right, 3006, 30, 30, 30, that's close enough. Uh, with a stop at 29.89, I'm going to turn this red and bump this up, 29.89, 29. Pretty tight, but okay. Kind of close. Close enough for my work. Well, if you buy it up here, if it breaks out, that would make sense. That's good. And target 36. Your target's a little higher than mine. In which, let, let's, go, let, let's go check that out. You might be taking these highs right to their, what do you say, 36, 42... There you go. I see what Dave's doing now. Do you see what, what I just did here? I just learned something. And, and I learned something about, about David there, um, which is, I think is all great. Now you see how he planned this trade. Exactly. Super. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see, Malcolm. Hey, Malcolm. Uh, missed you the last few days. I know you're, I think you're on vacation, right? But uh, certainly have missed you. 
uh, I've done my own work, and if we're to cut my losses by 50%, my gains would be substantially higher, nosebleed higher. That's all we have to do, we, and we have to be comfortable with taking a loss. There are some days that taking a loss is worth more money than actually making money. That's crazy, but it's true. Crazy. Uh, let's see. Jeff bought some space last minute. Yeah, that was on my list maybe to you know consider, but space, that's not right. Try to get it right, Rick. S-P-C-E. There we go. Yeah, see, this was my list. I made it all through the day looking for something to buy toward the end of the day. And um, space was on that list. Uh, looks terrific. Let's see, I bought space the last minute of the market today. Uh, January 19 calls. I just bought one call and will buy more if it goes in my direction. I think that, by the way, is a fabulous strategy. Um, buy one call. Um, it's... it's I, I, one of my favorite, say, part of the money management strategy is to do that. Um, what I tend to do is not buy on the way up, but buy if it pulls back. But I probably should be buying. It's going in the direction I want it to go. So great call. I think that's a great trade right now. I mean, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but uh, terrific strategy. Thank you for sharing. And, and guys, gals, you, you don't need to buy a bucket load of contracts or stock to make money. You really don't. I sold a few of my losses recently to offset some of my winners. Hate, hate paying taxes. <laughs> Grin. Yeah, really. Well, yeah, we all do. Uh, but my broker says if I'm not paying taxes, I'm not making money. I, that's it, it, my, my accountant. Um, yeah, she said the same thing. She says, I'm the only uh, person, her only client, that when I go in, I, I always have to pay. And when she tells me the number, she says, I'm the only client she has that smiles and grins and says, thank you very much. Yes. Yep. It's, yeah. If they owe you money, you screwed up somewhere. Um... Let's see. Uh, try so maybe is it time to almost go home here? Um, Jay, I love things you come up with, Malcolm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Malcolm is somebody you never want to uh, have a word argument with him or a wit problem, a wit argument or anything. Malcolm's quick. And, uh, hey, by the way, anybody here that's never uh, been around uh, and seen Malcolm trade, or, I mean, not that you can see him trade, but, you know, he posts what he's buying, he posts what he's getting rid of. Um, it's, sometimes it just makes you want to get angry uh, at how well he does, and the, um, hope you don't mind me talking about you, and uh, the strategy he uses, and during the day, his comments, uh, it's not, it's not always, I bought this, I sold this, I bought this, I sold this. It's, it's these little nuggets, um, that for me, many times I have to read it two or three times to get it. I'm slow, uh, but they're just absolute nuggets, true nuggets there. My problem is not, uh, big losses, but, uh, not big gains. Dave, I have an answer for that. Uh, I'm not, you know, I, I have a possible answer. I should say that. Let's just stick with space right here, okay? Um, but what we're, we're, we're going to do is we're not going to buy one contract. We're going to buy, oh, I don't know. We're just going to bump it to three. How's that? Three contracts. And now, so we own space. Great for us. We own three contracts. It comes up. And maybe we're at the 50 period moving average and it puts a little wick in here. You don't like that. So what do you do? Close out, take, take a third off. 
So what do you do here? Boom, you sell one, you now have two. So you've made some good money. Now you lay your stop in there and providing it continues to go up. I mean, if it comes down and hits your stop, you're stopped out, done deal, game's over for this, for this moment. But say it opens up and it rocks up higher. Maybe it does this for a couple, three days. Okay. Maybe we get up here and and uh, it puts uh, it hits the 200 right here. It hits the 200 and pull, pulls back. So what do you do? The same thing you just did. Take one off. Keep one. Move your stop up. You have made, and you can do the math or you can just try it, but you will be blown away at how much money you will make doing this. And your last piece, look, as long as, as, long as it goes up and it stays above your stop, let it keep going. You only have one contract. Do you have you're asking the question, so I don't think you know. How much money one contract would make you here? If you bought it here, one contract up there, the, the amount of money is insane. This is one of the beauties of options. But that is one way to do it. Um, and if you can't buy more than one contract, then buy one and live with it or don't go after expensive charts you know that, that you can't so anyway i i think that is a terrific solution maybe something to think about uh what's my rule to adding to a position if i want to i'll add to it um that's my rule uh, we don't have to complicate this i bought gm yesterday i bought it here Here's something I never do. It's just a personal thing. I, I've never done this. I'm not going to start today. But say it moves up. Now, there's a possibility. There is a strong possibility that I add to this on a breakout. There is that strong possibility. Once it does that, it can do this for the next nine years. And I will never, not ever, not ever will I add to it. That's just my rule. That doesn't mean it's right. That's just me. Um, uh, and let's see, Vitaly, everybody else, I, I, I think what we need to do is cut it out. Cut it out. Why is it doing that? There it is. Okay. Is... We have this, this idea of trading. It's, it's, it's humongous. We have all these things we're looking at. Drill it down to something smaller. And, and look, you don't, you're, you're not going to get it right the first time. Okay? It, you're, you're not. And it's okay. But get rid of all the fringe, all these, these, these things that needs to be on there that you think needs to be on there and, and dial it in, dial it in tight, dial it in where, um, you know, exactly what strategies you're going to trade, uh, chart patterns you're going to trade, and you could care less what somebody else does. I, I call this getting bullied into a trade. Don't ever get bullied into a trade just because somebody's trading it. It doesn't mean that it's your trade. Get rid of all the fringe. Get rid of all the baloney. And I, the next question is, well, how do I know what's baloney and what's not? We'll, we'll go there too. Drill it down to something very, very simple. Very tight. An example might be BX. Do you trade $146 stocks? If you don't, stop looking at them. Only, only look at what, you're, what, you, what you will truly trade. That's one of the fringe things to get rid of. That's baloney right there. So I know, I know traders, and the reason I'm bringing this up 
is I know traders that they only trade stocks above $10, but less than $30. But yet they look at 4,000 stocks. I just want to slap them when we do coaching. I really, really do. Stop looking at them. That is baloney. Only look at what you're going to trade. Okay, let's assume that you look at $146. If you are going to be a dedicated trap trader, you missed it. You're done. You're cooked. Only focus on charts that's in the trap. Now, I'm not a dedicated trap trader. I mean, it's one of my tools, definitely. But I'm not, it's not my only tool. Ne going along with, say, the 3 8 trap trade, I like to look for breakouts of the 3 8 trap. This right here, smoking hot, if you ask me. So if that fits what you like to do, do just that. Okay? If you want to add to it, you can add to it. Uh, I'm, I'm a rounded bottom breakout trader, Chewy. I have very limited chart patterns that I look for. I, I've, I've gotten rid of all that, all that baloney, all the fringe, all that outside stuff. N nail it down to something very tiny. That's your world. If it's not in your world, don't trade it. As you become a better trader, as you become a better trader, then you can expand your world. Absolutely. I don't think you ever want to be this big. There's no reason for it. Anyway, thanks. I hope that kind of helped. Uh, let's see the fact that you add uh, on a down. I, mean, I need to, sorry, I, a bad habit of mine. I never finish this question here. I'm fascinated by the fact that you add if the stock uh, is down or on a red candle. That's the only time I'll buy a red candle, by the way. Um, I only add... Uh, or buy a green candle uh, or a movement up of the opposite on puts. Uh, I'd be interested in your comments. Okay, I think we just talked about that. And you know, Jeff, you're not wrong and you're not right. I'm not wrong and I'm not right. You know, talking to each other. There's nothing wrong with what you do. I know, I know a lot of people that uh, right here in the trading room that they will buy this candle all day long right there. And I got to tell you, it bugs me. Not lying to you. It bugs me. I can't do that. I have to wait for a bullish candle. I have to. I, I, I cannot bring myself to buy a candle when it's down. Does that mean that's wrong? No. I'm going to use Malcolm there. If, if Malcolm buys that, look, that might bug me, but that doesn't make it wrong. That's just me. So you, where you buy only when, or you add to, when it moves up, I, I mean, I'll buy on that breakout, but I'm not going to add to it if it's moving up like that. But I will buy the breakout, yeah. And I like buying the pullback, on stocks that I originally bought, GM would be a good example, that I bought and it pulled back still in my pocket. That's my pocket right there. That green box is my, my add to area, not, not any one price. It's that whole area. So when this was down today, I added to it. I've lowered my cost tremendously, and my stop is right here. I have just I have I have taken my risk down to almost nothing on this trade. Now there's no guarantee it's going to go up, none at all. I have no guarantees of that at all. But what I have done is I have just nearly eliminated risk because now my stop is right there. my cost in, in stop. And thank you, by the way. Okay. I would expect anything else. Uh, let's see, Jason. Uh, 
Let's see, NI, is that a 3H trap? Let's see. It is. Great chart. Let's talk about it. Would I buy this? Not in a million years would I buy this. Is it a good buy for somebody? It might be. And that would be okay. Now, I do want to talk about this just for a second. This is a 3H strap, but just because charts are in a 3H strap does not mean that they are a good chart. I'm just saying that. I'm not saying this is a bad chart. You've got a nice trend here. It looks pretty good. I have to also recognize that it's got some funky stuff going on here. What's up? What's up with my thing here? What's up with this great big old wick right here? By itself, I really don't care. But what's up with that candle? What's up with that candle? There's a whole lot of charts out there, and I think I could find one looking better than that. Now, with that said, that's my personal opinion. That's my personal opinion. So, it is a 3H trap. It is trending. I don't know what your trade plan is. Maybe your trade plan is a buy on a breakout, and I would have a completely different attitude about that. I would say, okay, that makes a little sense. But buying it in here, I have to ask why. I hope that helped. And I, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to be gougy there. Okay, just throw my opinion out. Just my opinion. And sometimes my opinion is worthless about 99% of the time. Hello, Frank. Trading is like a business. Someday you make money and someday you're losing money and you have the toilet running over. Yes, you are so correct. <laughs> Let's see. Gwen, I look at what a company does and will buy. Yeah, and that, that's another thing too, uh, folks. A little something about Gwen um, that I've learned over the years is uh, Gwen is not just a pure chart trader. Uh, Gwen gets into the... the uh, uh, fundamentals of a company and things like that. Did you really buy laser? You, <laughs> you, good job. <laughs> oh my goodness sakes. Nice, Gwen. What a great place to leave it at today. Nice. <laughs> Crazy. Congratulations. All right, seriously, it's time for me to go. My bedtime. I do want to say good night to everybody and thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all the questions. Uh, thanks for letting me sort of be me, okay? I appreciate that. I, I do. Sometimes I can be a little abrasive. I know that. Uh, it's it's from the heart, though. It really is. And uh, sometimes I can be out <laughs> in uh, Sometimes I can push the, the envelope a little, so thanks a lot. All right, we'll see everyone tomorrow. Thank you. Have a great, great evening tonight, all right? Later. <laughs>